Now that we have our basic setup and our image planes arranged, let's go ahead and do some modeling. I'm going to start in the front view, and what we're going to do is we're going to build the wheel first. And since the wheels are identical in style, but in different size, we're going to go ahead and just build one and then copy it over and scale. So looking at our sketch, you notice that we have an indication of a profile here. We have an indication of a profile here, and we have a basic layout for what the model is going to look like. In this case, there's a lot of interpretation to be done in the 3D modeling environment, and I actually prefer that because 3D models don't lie. What you see is what you get. And I try to do as much designing in 3D as I can, as opposed to just CAD modeling. Anybody could be a CAD modeler, but what we're trying to do is use the CAD tools to create art. And in order to do that, we're going to use the sketch as a guideline and generate as much of the actual design and much of the actual styling. We're going to make those decisions in 3D. So let's go ahead and jump into this. And basically what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the rear profile and I'm just going to draw some quick little guidelines in here to kind of give myself an indication of about how big this wheel is going to be. I'm also going to just very quickly drop a line in here as to where, maybe I'll adjust that a little bit, where I think the center line on this thing is going to be. And then we're going to generate a profile. I'm going to use a control point curve here. I'm using my O snaps, and I have my O snaps disabled intentionally because if I hit the Alt key, you'll notice that they temporarily turn on or off. I'm going to leave all these on for now until they start becoming a problem, and then I can turn ones off that are intrusive. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just snap to the intersection here. I'm going to shift drag my first point because I want this to be tangent across the center line. And then I'm going to start tracing pretty much how I want this wheel to look. And I'm going to kind of pick where my center line is. I'm going to just use a straight line here. That's going to be about my center line. And now I'm going to turn my points on. I can also turn points on over here. I have it set up in a pop-up. And I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to pick this. I'm going to use Gumball to just slide this stuff around. I want it to have a nice kind of puffy feel, and I want it to have kind of a section where it has a little bit of hump in the center, but again, it needs to be tangent, so I need to keep these two points lined up. Move this around until it just feels right. I'm looking for feel here. And then I'm going to actually drag this past the center line, and I'm just going to trim it. So I'm going to pick the trim line. I'm going to pick the object to trim, and right-click to accept. So I've got my profile here, and I'm going to go ahead and just mirror it. And I can mirror down here, or I have it set up on a hotkey. Snap to there. Just going to mirror it. And we'll take a look and see, does this kind of make sense? Is this about where I want it to be? And it looks like a little bit wide. So I'm going to join these two. And I'm going to scale this using Gumball and then slide it over, just so that it feels right. So now I'm going to edit this curve a little bit and I need to make room for the wheel and in this case the wheel looks like it's going to come over somewhere around here so I'm going to just bring a line over for reference and I need to make a space for my wheel and where it's going to be just drag this over so it goes all the way through so I'm going to just use this as reference and I want to draw something that kind of represents the tire rolling over and getting into my hub so I'm going to just kind of wing this until it kind of feels like something that would be tire based. Go ahead and mirror this. And I'll just connect these two. So that kind of gives me a cross section from where this is going to be. So I'm going to split this this time. I'm not going to trim it. I'm going to split this curve with these curves because I'm going to use this profile and this profile, but I still want to keep this because I want that for reference. So I'm going to trim these together. I'm going to trim this curve with that curve. And then I'm going to join all these up. So now I've got my tire. 
and I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to revolve it just to create my wheel. But first, I'm going to go ahead and design the rest of this stuff. So I've got my interface for where my tire, this is my cross section for my tire, and I need to actually make the cross section for the wheel. And to me, the wheel is fairly undefined, but it typically a wheel has a little lip and then it'll have a step and then it'll have another step and then it'll sink back in. So let's kind of lay out where those points may be. We've already laid out where the outer part of it. So let's lay down where the lip may be and then possibly another step and then maybe even a secondary step that's not indicated. And let's look at how this would interface if this was a wheel. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use a polyline. And I'm going to come very close to where my wheel is. And in this case, it doesn't really matter if it's overlapping because in the end of the day, we're going to Boolean these two pieces together. So I'm going to just draw a little lip and then I'm going to come maybe in a little bit like that and then maybe out and then maybe we'll drop in and then we'll go in the back. And I want both of these to cross over the center line because I'm going to just trim this off. And I have a hotkey set up for trim. And then I'm going to just get rid of my guides because they're in the way. And we'll take a look at how this fits together. In this case, I can get rid of these lines now because I don't need them anymore. And let's mirror this. I can use the mirror here, but again, I've got a hotkey. Again, same thing I did with the navigation. I set up a hotkey. Now this is way off. So I'm going to join these two. Scale in one direction. Scale one. I'm going to start from here. Come over here. Just going to bring this back. And again, I'm not terribly worried about this because these are going to get Boolean together at some point. So let's take a look at this wheel and see how we're doing. Let's go ahead and revolve this. So I'm going to go to the perspective view. And you'll notice that I'm working on the rear view of this, even though I eventually want this to be in the front view. That's fine because I'm just going to revolve it here and then I'm going to just turn it and place it. Then I can start working on the spokes and some other things like that. But since I had a profile here, that's what I wanted to work with. So let's go ahead and revolve it. I'm going to go to the surface menu, just grab the revolve. Use that as our axis. I want it to be a full circle and I'm going to just right click to accept. Let's shade it and take a look at what we got. So we got a nice kind of puffy wheel there. I'm feeling pretty good about that. It's got a few sharp edges on it, and we'll knock that off as we go forward. Let's take this and rotate it. And it doesn't matter because it's symmetrical. And then let's place it and see how we're doing. So that kind of feels right. I may scale it up just a hair so that it feels a little better. And I'm going to go to my right view, and I'm going to place it about where it's supposed to be. So pretty quickly, we've just created some curves and we've created a wheel and tire and placed it in space. This is a good place to stop. We'll continue in the next lesson.